Hello, hello. Today I have a bit of a different thing from the usual usual replay casts. Or actually, today it's gonna be two replays that I'm gonna cast back to back because I played them yesterday in the single faction tournament as Cathay, and I played twice against Britannia back to back, once on round four and once in the semi-finals of the tournament. And I used almost the same build. And uh, on a map that was on the first glance rather similar, um, but with very different results. Uh, against opponents that both are very skilled players. So, um, not a skill issue on one side that it went differently per se, but a rather um, a strategical decision um, made by the players or different build decisions too. So um, we're gonna try, it, or I am gonna try to figure out why uh, it went so differently. Um, so the Bretonian build is simple. It's a full man at arms opening with 10 men at arms, so maximum they can bring. Uh, three peasant bowmen and two gray relics. Two, yeah, here's the second. And a paladin, a life damsel with dwellers and earthblood, and King Luan Luan Kerr. So Luan is a bit of a thing here because aside from very problematic situations, Cathay has nothing to kill him. Like, not really. He is an amazing fighter, he has death stats, he can escape. Uh, you can't really shoot him down if he pops this lion shield, so you can't do stuff like net him down, gun him away, uh, because he has so much resistance at this point and he regenerates by himself. And uh, on top of that, he has a life mate support if actually needed. And then his sort of Quran is amazing to support fights around him. So he is a beast and he's a problem. Um, for the Cathay side, I opened with four normal Jade Warriors and two Herberts and three Jade Crossbowmen. One of them has shields because uh, I had the coins to spare. And I know that one of the main purposes of those great crossbowmen is to one, provide harmony, um, and two, to shoot down those archers here. Because they will cost, they aren't strong Fs for an archer, if you would say so, but if you just let them fire free, they cause a lot of problems. Uh, an archer that spends all their ammunition will always do good. And you can't really have that. Um, then I came with Yuan Bo with a net, uh, which is an obvious choice against superior Bretonian cavalry um, if you are going for a gun line or an archer heavy faction. Um, and the Jade Shield. I, I kind of like the spell um, with a bit of intensity increase. It's a lot of resistance, and if you you probably should always cast it upgraded. I'm not sure if I do it here, but 22 seconds, 50% um, damage resistance is quite good. Oh, it automatically paused. Um, and roiling skies, and yeah, y you will see why. Um, Luan is once, of course, an obvious target, though 
trying to kill Luan is, uh, I wouldn't say delusional, but not worth the effort. Uh, and then the Righteous Lances of Wei Jin. Uh, I get a bit of um, what to tell, tell it best critique about taking them in the opening since they don't really cut it against the Bretonian equivalents. Uh, so. Mm, it, it's a bit questionable. Um, Jade Warriors are something that are superior to the Bretonian side, so it's something you can play to victory in a sense. You don't play the game that you're inferior in against your opponent. Um, but with the net and uh, giving them a free charge into things, they can do really well, uh, in my opinion. And just going with Jade Warriors and completely abandoning mobility, uh, even though it's it's a losing game that you play quite, or a game that you have you have to invest in to make it work, um, I don't think that is a good approach to abandon mobility and other variants of mobility are even worse than them uh, and the last thing that was my first summon here for 500 gold so straight at the start of the game is the alchemist with just well a master of elemental winds for the uh, stuff harmony amplifier and those two abilities and I do really like them, um, especially for crows, because for uh, 30 seconds duration or 25, which isn't too short, crows become nuts with this. And if you manage to net down a knight and then get a charge on them with crows with those statues up, um, that's gonna work. That's really gonna work. <laughs> I did it against Slayers before, and that was even cooler because the Slayers have no armor. Um, yeah, so uh, I talk again too much without leaving it free running. So this map doesn't really have a home objective. You can argue this point is kinda your home objective because it's closer, but it's not by much. It's not really. You don't get it completely for free like on other maps. Um, still, I don't uh, like to approach uh, this in a clear front line and go for the middle. Because if you do that, what happens is that you fight somewhere around here against the opponent and you aren't really on this objective, you aren't really on this, and you aren't really on this objective. Um, if the other side wants to, they can push you back. Um, because your formation, you need to stay in formation, and the other side for them is it isn't so problematic. Um, so if you do it like this, you kind of get one objective for free um, a bit. On other maps that's stronger uh, advantage because there's somewhere here the white line already. No, maybe here. Uh, and things have a hard time to surround you from this side. Beautiful drawing. Um, so one bit special thing here. I get those extremely expensive rider knights here and I net them down. They are affected by riding skies. Then I buff the crows with uh, armor and melee attack and suddenly they win against the units that cost a thousand, a thousand gold more I think than them. Um, it gets a bit worth once the stats go off. Here I actually misclicked 
Zhao, uh, Yuan Bo's transformation. Um, I wanted to do something else, I didn't really mem remember what. And I'm a bit lucky here that I get my righteous lances way and in the air before this dweller hits. Uh, because it would have killed them too. Dwellers currently is a super disgusting spell and yeah you see here full health two of my units. The archers are actually shattered I think or wiped. One of those. Um, so yeah but all in all I removed those Royal Pegasus Knights, which is nice, and he didn't yet have enough mobility on the field to punish me now from going cleaning up some of his peasants in the backfield. Um, he gets them now, and like hell, I don't want to duke it out with Knights of the Realm with Jade Lancers, because it's not gonna work. Um, yeah, yeah. Bo is kind of just standing around and providing its, his harmony amplifier and it's about enough <laughs> for him to do, I think. Um, a net here on those while standing in my archer range. They don't have AP but it's decent and they have a nice fire rate. Um, here the Knight of the Ram kind of overextended a bit into my field. Um, where I was daring enough to fight it out with them and used the jade lances with the jade shield as a blocker and then as an anvil for those two units and removed it rather quickly. Um, so I mostly swarm a lot more jades right now because I don't have any other strong mobility that can actually fight against the Bretonian mobility um, because yeah um, Cathay doesn't really have those <laughs> uh, so I try to desperately get this point here try to get my single entities on the edge of the point and to capture it because otherwise the time will be rather mercilessly clicking tick against me but it doesn't it isn't really enough since my units here get grinded down so much not least because Luan is doing a terrific job here and terrorizing my jades uh, bit of blunder moved this I just up a bit too much right when the front line was breaking. I wanted them on the point to shoot while standing on the point, even if it's very close to them. They have enough armor to not be uh, completely in danger due to this, but it, it was a bad timing for this. Uh, those jades need to find a home. Bit of bad move here. Uh, I wanted to use the bombardment from the crows, but I brought them into position and One of your the archers removed them before I clicked it. Um, so, slowly with the help of the jade lancers um, to jump in as a temporary fix for my jade's break, jade warriors breaking, I. Uh, try to break the lines here but it's a rather even fight. I have netted down a Grey Knight here and uh, tried to take it with Halbert but I gave them melee attack but a bit late I think and my righteous lances here pay for uh, being on the ground. And Jades, they don't really kill things <laughs> fast, even if you buff them up, they somehow don't really do it. Uh, so uh, those guys were a misclick. I want to do summon something else, but 
Actually, they might not be a super bad choice here. Uh, the Paladin is so straight. Yeah. Blocking them. Try to shoot into the Grey Knights, but the line of sight here is very murky. Uh, actually works, but it's just not a lot of damage. They got netted again into Halberts. That's maybe more impactful. But I've taken the point. The Bretonian capture rate finally broke. Uh, or the whole front line on this side, and the other side is in return also getting a mass route. So, yeah. As you can see, the points. I almost got to the point where I had to absolutely triple cap them. Uh, so, it took a real long time to grind that out here, and the Bretonia player almost stalled me enough from the point to win it on this account because if they just have to defend one point um, it's it's gonna be hard for Cathay uh, though at this point of the game it really looks good uh, for me and Cathay it really looks good but uh, that's a bit of an illusion, I would say, because Britannia has most of its value into very few units still, like uh, those double grails and Luin is virtually untouched. And I have this net here, but you see what the grades do to Jade Warriors, and I have nothing to stop them. Uh, like, if I throw Crows into them, they just die. Uh, so, I tried to take this point here, and it works decently for quite a while, since I those Peasant horseman here provide me a lot of capture rate before he can summon some knights to clean off this point. Uh, but while I do this, those grails go ham into you my backline. And point. yeah, as that, I have nothing to stop them at this point. Um, you need a relatively tight formation of halberds to scare them off. And I am very stretched. My control of the field is currently this, and Bretonia owns all this and this due to the Grails. Uh, so, it's a bad place for Archers to be, and Luin here currently completely wrecks you and Bo uh, inside of my own Halberds, which is a bit shocking, but. Yeah, I guess it's a monster against uh, a foot soldier. Even if he is expensive and a duelist, it's not super working. So, opponent apparently saved up quite a lot of money to summon two Knights of the Realm uh, in quick succession. So, to take this point, are they actually on the point? Yes, they are. Um, and takes us back. I try to just capture it against them, but it, it doesn't work. They can just scare me off. Uh, I can't fight those Knights of the Realm, and this is a huge problem. Um, on this side too, the Grail Knights just one after the other dunk on everything I have here. Uh, what's their value? 1k, but... Um, the enemy has captured one of your victory points. Take they, it back. Yeah, push things off. Uh, you see the Jade Lancers get completely, utterly wrecked. And suddenly I just equalized the points because Bretonia had such a lead. And suddenly, even so, things looked so good for me for a moment. And I had so many troops. I'm in a, in a double cap. And I can't really stretch out more than currently. And uh, those guys were misclick again. I 
the reinforcement panel changed under my uh, click because some unit was rejoining into the reinforcement pool and it moved up all the things by one. So yeah, those iron heads will do nothing and this was rather obvious at this stage. Um, okay, I uh, think it was at this point I casted a net here to um, either catch them or force them off the point. If I caught them, I could have charged them down because if Bretonian Knights don't get their charge bonus, they aren't all that hot. And here I realize I'm slowly gonna get grounded down by their Knights of the Realm and Grail Knights. So I can't fight on value anymore. I just have to hold this point. And that's the de device of <laughs> what I'm gonna do and try now. And just throwing everything I have into this point um, to try to hold it. And it's actually not that bad of a fight because uh, the Bretonian side also knows they need to take this point and they need it quickly before they have to triple cap me because that is also gonna be difficult for them. Uh, and yeah, here you observe the beauty of Bretonian capture weight. Uh, they only have the knights here. I have full capture weight infantry and some single entities. So I'm still holding the point, even though it's so many more units for them than for me. And yeah, I, I'm slowly losing it, but the clock is ticking. Uh, trying some cheeky maneuver here to just bait some value away. So I th think I'm... Yeah, actually due to some stuff dying or routing here and the jade arriving, I am getting the capture weight back on this point and or hold it for a bit longer and now once I cross 1400 I think they have to triple cap, they have to triple cap me now um, they take it, like if they're taking it 20 seconds earlier um, they would have won transforming you and bow, I sh should have maybe done this earlier um, as he can fight stronger in dragon form and I didn't have wins anymore anyway blocking things here with the crows to hold my point I they even actually didn't take it wow okay I didn't notice when we were playing that that I was still holding it <laughs> I thought it was lost actually uh, because he started selling out I from it. it. Unending glory is yours. Okay. So this was the first one, and this was a win, and it was damn close. <laughs> I just land this, did okay. Yunbo didn't get a lot of value, but he this the net support was invaluable. I just did good. He took quite a while to shut them down, even though Luan was kinda um, going crazy on them, and I had nothing to stop him. Because I don't know if Kathari has something to stop him. If you know, uh, let me know. Um, so, he has. Luan got crazy value. And he also has support abilities, which are not counted in there, as a terror, and. Uh, he almost killed my lord, and he probably could have had, um, he very likely could have had if he really set his mind to it a bit, a bit earlier. Um, yeah, 
the life match you, you've seen the trailers in the beginning and probably she should have healed less and done a second trailer anyways at some point but it's easy to get lost in sh spamming cheap healing uh, and not save up for points so okay mana dump value you don't have to look at grey knights yeah they both paid for themselves so i don't think think this one is missing 50 and this one got netted like three times four times and shot a bit and charged by halbert and still got its value though you also need to acknowledge the healing so yeah they are a problem but so are the knights of the realm already that's just a bit easier to deal with um then they at least have no armor piercing um something interesting here the crows got summoned like three times i think uh two three maybe i don't i don't remember um but most of the value is from this very strong setup i did earlier in the game against the uh, uh royal hippogriff knights uh pegasus knights not hippogriffs royal pegasus yeah now well, those guys actually got their value back. Jade lances not so much and they also got summoned multiple times. Okay, this was the first one and this is gonna be the second. As you can see I come with almost the same build. The opening is actually identical I think. Um, I just juggled a few things around in the reinforcements, um, amongst other things to include Felix in the reinforcement to not get you and Bo into such a situation again where he is almost dying, but have something to provide healing onto him uh, constantly. But uh, I never get to summon him, and yeah, you, you're gonna s see how that goes. The Bretonian approach is very different to the previous one. Um, so I will risk a thousand more of your lifetimes in this struggle. Never so so we have a Fey and double fight. Paladin. Fey you, was Chalice of Potion. Favor of the Fey, healing and the currently utterly busted and strong trellis and her mortis engine so a very usual setup here um, we have one mounted human to capture the points early if you foot squires and it's mostly foot squires and peasant so the real peasant peasants uh, a single relic and two men at arms and those royal hippos um i'm not completely sure about them but yeah their job is to deal damage <laughs> and they are trying to capture this point or at least delay my capture of it and with they have nine capture weights single entities are three usually or almost every always so they will actually take this point over the capture rate of five from the halberts and yeah let me slow it for a moment down so you could say that the map is rather similar in a way to uh the other one uh, we just played road to telepheim um this is a glade of the evergreen here for those that don't know um it's an open field with the points all in the open, surrounded by forests. So far, um, it, in a sense, rather similar. Also, some control points to advance from the forest. Um, the point layout is, of course, different. 
And there's also something else different, and that is this distance here, or almost you got to say this distance. It's very long, even this is much longer than it would be on uh, Road to Telepime. So um, you remember how I said that Bretonia, that at some point in the last game, I ruled like this middle space with my army and both this and this belong to Bretonia. Um, that's the problem you can run into. Uh, against Bretonian cavalry, like uh, Grey Knights are the worst offenders of it, or the strongest problem, uh, but also others, you uh, don't contest the open field against them. You don't really have something to contest the open field against them, so you're control reach extends almost just as much as your halberds can uh, reach or as much as your formation uh, goes and on telepime i could do this funny uh, little skewed approach um, where you have one side fairly safe because uh, they don't want to go completely around you and basically only have to defend one side um, but this side is disconnected from the enemy army which is gonna be here so uh, the drawings disappear a bit quickly but on this map you can't really do that because you don't want to go and push up till here uh, because then you're giving the opponent a very strong advantage while having a way longer way here that is comple completely gonna be harassed by the opposing side. They're gonna take this forward from you, first from you, so you can't shoot them with cannons or something. Even if you place a cannon here, it will have a hard time. Um, so I tried to go into a weird position bit weird position where I would take this point kind of right in between all of the points and then try to exert control from that there. Um, here I try to do exactly the same as I did with uh, uh, what's it called with the Royal Pegasus Knights last game I tried to do with the Royal Hippogriff Knights but somehow it doesn't work. I don't know what kills my crows here so badly. Um, sure the red unit. Yeah, it must be the hippos. It, it kind of works. They are now dropping rapidly, but I think it's largely due to the archers shooting them, actually. Uh, crossbows and not my trap and my also really expands as righteous lances also go die here um, so against them this approach kind of failed and they gonna get a lot of healing uh, yeah. here um, foot squares don't like to be charged that's generally a theme for all great weapon infantry uh, but I leave the Jade Lancers here a bit too long in combat. And my front line here is almost breaking. Get Knights of the Realm and Cresting Knights. Um, Cresting Knights are a huge problem. They are also armor piercing and quickly break my mass blockers. And yeah, still I wouldn't really say that this here is a good trade for Bretonia. It's, they're losing a lot of their expensive tools, um, but the problem is they kinda overwhelm me. They kinda charge in, take okay-ish trades that usually would lose them the game, but um, they grind me down uh, in, a say, in a way and they also held this point here for a long time so they have a, 
quite a strong advantage. Even took this time point early. I maybe should have prevented that. And here we're gonna get the new and cool dwellers. Uh, oh, it was actually undercast? I'm not sure. Uh, so, I take this point, but um, the Brit you can kind of see the, my value here. I took very favorable trades. Usually, this count this counter, you you shouldn't look at them um, in a general sense because it often just straight lies to you. Uh, so much stuff not counted in there, and uh, yeah, it it doesn't give you a real picture, but it gives you a rough estimate and uh, you see I was rather doing favorably here um, but this is gonna get in with the Bretonian strategy worse and worse I still have this formation here but I'm already in a position where I can't really defend my crossbows any longer um, as well um, and my so I grouped up really tight to uh, I grouped up really tight to still keep them online um, because tight formations are of course helpful so it shouldn't be standing here but it's on the point Tight formations are helpful to keep your archers alive, but I got nuked in return, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and the archers still get compromised uh, because the line here is then slowly breaking. And um, now it's basically over. I want to say this is something that never happened in the last game. My formation actually completely broke, and once this happens, um, Bretonia rules the open space. I, I can never reinforce quickly enough point. to um, reform ranks and build a new formation. And thus, I can never really get into a point where I can use archers again. Um, and yeah, that's. I I think you can describe that as a Bretonian strategy. Be play very aggressive, and even if you kind of lose those fights, simply the fact that. Um, if you, uh, since you reinforce quicker with the cavalry and roll and intercept the opponent's reinforcements, um, even if you lose the fight in the end, you kind of win on this. Uh, because if you manage to break the opponent's formation, it's kind of over for them. Here I lose this point. Funny that this is the last point I'm holding. And I don't even have any chance of retaking it. Those Jade Lancers here, they are gonna get taken to Pound Town, as Turin would say. Um, tidings. The enemy if they try to fight the Knights points. of the Realm. Take so. Yeah, um, yeah, Junbo is kind of dying, which is, oof, so it's a full surround for Cresting Knights, and I think he buffed the, uh, Favor of the Fey in there to give them melee defense and to Paladin, uh, melee attack, attack is a, yes, here. Uh, Trellis more to scare things off, but it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, 
I have nothing to threaten them, so doesn't really scare the, need to scare this off and he has a staggering points advantage. Some cute attempts here trying to net them down and charge them, I even miss the second, no, and surrendered here. Only so, um, a lot of the value here is on the Fae, the other thing, they also did great, kinda, though they ate a real metric ton of healing. Actually, it can't be that much since the Fae casted three dwellers, I think, so, hmm. Curious. Though they did good, uh, can't say that, even though I prepared my trap like last game for them, um, it was fine. So, Squires did fine. My Halberts did great, those are probably the ones that fought the uh, hippos and they did okay. My archers did actually okay. Um, yeah, a lot of my things did really okay uh, early on, and that's kind of the difference in the approaches of this. I would say. This build here from Britonia was designed to fight and win against me. They, the foot square, uh, the, foot, foot, the, the, the men at arms are meant with the greater support to go for a real long grind fight and the calves and using this anvil to take me down. Um, this approach was to just inflict maximum damage to my side they weren't they don't try to straight win the fight they just inflict maximum damage before going down and then slowly transform this game into one that is without formations like this was a long grinded out formation game this was cracking formation and then trying to fight without any, yeah, structures or formations on the battlefield. Because that's a game that Bretonia wins uncontestedly, basically. So, a very different approach, and you can see the results. I'm not sure what Cathay does against it. Um, if you know, let me. Uh, know it uh i'd be curious about it probably gonna face such things again so yeah and this is taking quite long already so i'm gonna cut it here <laughs> probably too long maybe we will see see you on the next one